Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to see you all and to be with you all online. The bulletin and musical resource can be found at standrewdenver.org. Um, the great musical poobah, Tim Kruger, has declared that we will not sing verses three and five of the opening hymn. They, they mention war, so we're not going to sing them. And it's very, there are eight verses, so we get plenty of other verses. So we should, we should get lots. Anyway, it's that great for all the saints, so it's a good one. Thank you all so much for being here on this day when we remember those we love so much who have gone before us.
blessed be the one, holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation comes to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. 
and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these robed in white and where did they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one who knows. And he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him 
purify themselves just as he is pure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak. And taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Bind us together, O God, with all who have come before us, whose rest is now in your presence, 
and with all who live out their hopes and trials in other lands and places with whom we are all one people. Amen. Today, we're going to be talking about knitting and life. Knitting and life. I'm just back from a week-long conference for clergy called Credo. The main objective of Credo is for each person to come up with his or her own rule of life. So we spent a lot of time talking about our values, our priorities, what brings meaning, to our lives. During the presentations, it was also the perfect time to work on some socks that I have been knitting for the past 10 years or so. <laughs> As I was knitting and considering the big questions of life, I thought about the lessons for today and realized that it was actually the collect for All Saints Day that would make the best basis for this sermon. The collect which we just read begins, Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of the Son, Christ our Lord. Imagine God as a knitter, creating slowly, row by row, the fabric of the universe. Unlike the famous Madame de Farge in A Tale of Two Cities, who grimly spent her days knitting the names of the enemies of the French Revolution into a scarf and thereby sending many to the guillotine, God is knitting the whole creation together, one whole piece of cloth in which every stitch is ultimately connected to every other stitch. The yarn that formed the stitches of the lives of the saints is the same yarn that today and in the days to come is forming the stitches of our lives. To continue with this idea of knitting as an image for God's work, although there is a definite beginning to something that you knit, the row of stitches you cast on, the ending is a different issue. It can be added onto forever. When a ball of yarn is done, you can just begin another ball of yarn with no change in the seamlessness of what you are knitting. Until you finally bind off the stitches, anything can be added. Even if one stitch gets dropped, no matter how far back in the piece. The knitter can go back in and pick it up and weave it back in. That gives me hope that no matter how far we go astray, when we follow too much the devices and desires of our own hearts, God is always looking for the chance to pick up those lost stitches, those mistakes, and knit them back into the fabric of our lives in a way that brings forgiveness and healing. I like the way the yarn twists and turns, making each stitch. It reminds me of the twists and turns in my own life. One minute I'm going this direction, and the next minute that direction. But all those twists and turns join together to create a flat, smooth, strong piece of wool. Knitting also reminds me of the challenging times in my own life. When I was pregnant with my son Michael, I went into premature labor and almost lost him, and spent the last four months of the pregnancy in bed, flat on my back. Even though I was doing nothing, just lying there, it seemed as if every day I was doing something, keeping him alive, giving him a chance to be born as fully formed as possible. And when I got scared or hopeless, 
I got out my knitting and went to work. My husband had a much-loved sweater that he had gotten in Denmark that was falling apart. So I decided to make him another, just like the old one. Two sleeves, the body, and by the time I was ready to get up, the only thing left to do was to sew the shoulders together. So Michael and the sweater were born about the same time. When you knit in more than one color, it creates lots of dangling bits of yarn on the inside of the piece where you have changed to a different color. Those bits of yarn might remind us of the endings in our own lives. There are some endings that we never quite deal with, and so we leave them dangling, ready to catch on watches and rings as we put on the sweater, ready to derail us time and time again with the grief we have avoided or the loss we have denied. Or we can weave those bits of wool, those losses, back into the piece of knitting, back into the fabric of our lives. We can do the hard work of grief. We mourn the loss. And so the loss is knit into us in a healthy way, not dangling out there. But even when that bit of yarn is woven in well, there are still times when it peeks out from between the stitches. The collect continues, give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living. It is certainly true that we are sustained only by and through God's grace, but the phrase virtuous and godly living makes a saint sound impossibly good and more divine than human. Imagine one of those lurid best-selling paperbacks in the racks at the airport saying, the thrilling story of a virtuous and godly person. <laughs> would you pick that up? Or would you buy the latest Danielle Steele with its promise of all those exciting sinners and their escapades? How can we relate to someone like St. Antony of Egypt, who lived in a cave in the desert for 40 years? Or St. Hildegund, who spent her adult life disguised as a man in a monastery? Or St. Guthlach, who wore rough animal skins and ate one meal a day of barley bread and muddy water? Their circumstances may be wildly different from ours, but the great challenge they faced is exactly the one we face. How can we find meaning in our lives? What does it mean to be a human being? For that is what the saints were and are human beings. In The Power and the Glory, written by Graham Greene, the hero, or rather non-hero, is a seedy alcoholic priest who is caught by the revolutionary Mexican government and condemned to be shot. On the evening before his execution, he sits in his cell with a bottle of brandy and thinks back over the failures of his life. Tears pour down his face, Green writes. He was not at that moment afraid of damnation, even the fear of pain was in the background. He felt only an immense disappointment because he had to go to God empty-handed, with nothing done at all. It seemed to him at that moment that it would have been quite easy to be a saint. It would only have needed a little self-restraint, a little courage. He felt like someone who has missed happiness by seconds. He knew now that at the end, there was only one thing that counted, to be a saint. To be a saint. A little restraint, a little courage. Is that all that separates the average life from the saintly life? Those things and many others 
do make a difference, but perhaps one of the most key things is desire. One definition of original sin is that it is not too much desire. Rather, original sin is not desiring enough. Refusing the fullness of humanity which God is offering us, refusing to begin or continue the journey of self-discovery which lies before us. No one's journey is the same, but we have so many wonderful stories of other people's journeys to read and to consider. Joseph, who was sold by his brothers into slavery in Egypt and ended up saving his people from famine. Odysseus on his long journey home from the Trojan War. Captain Ahab, who risked everything to hunt the white whale. Huck Finn's long trip down the Mississippi on a raft towards freedom. Bilbo Baggins, the hobbit, who left the much-loved comfort of his own house to find the magic ring. Think about the story of your own life, the twists and turns, the gains and losses. What are the themes of your journey? Success, failure, desiring too much or not enough, deprivation, abundance. Perhaps it is made up of all of those things. But what is it we most want? What is it we seek? Magic rings, white whales, the holy grail? We come now to the last part of the collect, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Ineffable joys, joy that is too overwhelming to be expressed in words, the joy that comes from finding and following your desire, not a desire that comes and goes like biological desire, but the desire to do what God has given you to do. That kind of desire grows ever stronger as it is acted upon, a desire that takes you from strength to strength, hand in hand with God. Life, like journeys, involves movement, growth. It may involve leaving one place to be able to go to another. If it is well lived, it has moments of self-restraint, moments of courage, moments of letting go, and moments of grabbing onto all that God is calling us to be. All of us are called into the saint business with all the ineffable joys of that calling, which is to become fully human with God's loving intention, encouraging us, strengthening us, and never giving up on us. Always ready to weave us into the eternal fabric of life. Amen. In your bulletins, please join in the renewal of baptismal vows. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God?
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins. Keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before the prayers of the people this morning, I would like to invite anyone to come forward who would like a prayer for a birthday, anniversary, or any other prayer need on behalf of themselves or someone else. The prayers of the people are found in the service leaflet. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Andrew, and all your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others naming aloud or silently those for whom we have a special concern. Remembering Michaela Brown, Bonnie Clausen, Bill and Marcia, Brad and Carol, Tim and Sharon, George Hoover, Richard and Judy, Tina Marie and TJ Trump, Georgia, Carol Bush and Lisa Cisneros, Christina, Celinda, Marlene, all migrants, and Solomon. And we pray for those who have died, especially Jessica Kaufman, niece of Sue Kilgore. Eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So Lynn is up in celebration of her birthday. Lynn Valentine, sorry, we have two Lynns here. <laughs> Lynn Huber is up. She has been tutoring five people in Gaza. She's very concerned about their well-being, so we're praying for their safety this morning. Tom's son, Pastor Rob, has um, gotten COVID, and he's quite sick, and he's had to miss a lot of, he works at a church uh, in Albuquerque, and um, so it's been very hard for him, so we're praying for him. And it's Caroline's birthday and her son's birthday today. So lots of different things going on. So please join in the prayer in bold in your bulletins. 
Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. This morning we have a, an announcement um, about a prayer opportunity, and then Zoe Green will be talking to us about stewardship. Good morning. I'm Robert Bartolop. I have the honor of hosting the Friday noon Zoom session to pray the par prayers of the parish. Um, we follow the order of service for noonday, and then we incorporate all of the prayers for the parish, all of the names, all of the concerns that have been submitted and make up a list much greater than we are able to uh, do on Sunday morning. And so I would invite you to join me you can do that through the link in the fruits and join us at noon on Friday to read the prayers of the parish. Thank you. I thought for a moment I'd left my notes downstairs and I was really going to panic. <laughs> Forward in faith, walking in love. This is the theme for this year's stewardship campaign. I worked downtown for six years. For all those years, I parked in the parking lot next to the church. It's still the cheapest parking in downtown. Often, I'd see signs talking about welcome and belonging. And every Thursday, there was a sign for something called Evensong. I kept telling myself one of these days I'd walk into that building. But I'd had bad experiences in the past and bad experiences with the tradition I grew up in. Finally, my girlfriend put her foot down and we showed up for Christmas. The welcome was immediate and St. Andrews felt like a truly safe space for me. I couldn't wait to come back. The next service I attended was Evensong, the service with the enticing sign. I quickly came to realize this was an affirming, welcoming place who celebrated my curiosity and inquiry. A place that welcomed me for being me, who didn't expect me to change to fit in. The liturgy is beautiful and immediately grasped my attention, and the music is amazing. This is truly a place where people bring their all and where it's always appreciated when people do so. A year ago, I was some schmuck who was looking for cheap parking, and today I'm wearing an alb. <laughs> 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 
this is not what I expected my year to look like. <laughs> I'm infinitely thankful for everyone in this room and on the live stream. I was asked to talk a little bit about the ministries of this church, and being the person I am, I've poked my nose into just about every one of them, except the Flower Guild. Give me a call. <laughs> St. Andrews is full of beautiful people who bring their talents and treasure to bear for God and for the people around them, for the people in the community. From the acolytes to Zoe's readers, people bring their skills and talents here for the betterment of the community and worship of God. Even Song definitely does not bring in the receipts to pay for its expenses. But if I'm being honest, I probably wouldn't be standing here without it. This is just one of the ministries St. Andrews supports. The website and the back of the bulletin are full of them. Y'all are definitely moving forward in faith and walking in love. As has been said, stewardship includes how we bring the blessings we have received to the community. So some of you have gotten a letter in the mail. Those of you who haven't can find a pledge card in the stack in the back of the church. There's also a QR code floating around here somewhere. You can also check out the stewardship campaign on standrewdenver.org for more details. Thank you very much for letting me ramble. Thank God for St. Andrews. Let us with gladness present the offerings of our life and labor to God.
The Lord be with you. your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out of the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. Honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death, Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. 
Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, our patron, St. Andrew, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Behold who you are, become what you receive.
Diana, we send you out to share communion with those who are absent from this table. As you have been dead, now the others Our prayers are with you. Go in peace. Please join in the post-communion prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us to your image and nourishing us with spiritual food. In his sacrament of Christ's body and blood, now send us forth a May God, who has given us in the lives of his saints patterns of holy living and victorious dying, strengthen your faith and devotion and enable you to bear witness to the truth against all adversity. And the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with us all forevermore. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise be to God.